And today, I ruin a perfectly good set of headers. No, I did not ruin my headers. Sorry guys for all you haters. Plenty of haters out there. You know who you are. But what I had to do to this, I had to make this a D because it had a big blockage on the top of the LT1 port. If you want to see how much of a blockage it was, this is a square port. If I take this away, look at that. Especially on your nitrous, and you don't want any restriction on your exhaust if you're trying to make a performance motor. Some people are going to complain or argue the fact that, oh, it's not needed, it won't do anything. But when you're spraying nitrous, you don't want anything, especially on the top side of your port, because that's where the velocity is. You don't want anything hitting a brick wall. Now, let me talk about this awesomeness right here. I was using before I was using the expensive Dremel bits that were the stones they're like five dollars for like two of them which is a stupid absorbent price so I found this awesome little carbide bit setup on Amazon for like 15 I think 16 something shipped and this junk is the bomb it's the exact same thing you would use to port your heads the carbide bits but on a scaled down version and I've been using it to go into these holes and wall them out because I need to push these up so if you're curious how far down it was, look at that. That's how high you have to come up with that bad boy. It's crazy. Oh, before I continue, this is for people who like to comment before they watch the entire video. I did port these out, and basically what I did on this side, I went up until I punched through and I got the port to match the head on the LT1. And then what I did, and it was a pain in the butt with flux core, I ain't gonna lie. There's basically big holes right here at the top. So I had to start from here and I had to fill this in to make a bridge to gap this. You know, it's not the prettiest, but you know, I'm not making a show car, I'm making a play toy. And we wanna give this guy every chance to succeed, this old LT1 here. So here's the gasket. You can see where I poured it to fit. I had to uh, wall out the holes to bring it up. And the reason why is because this sits low when it's on the bolt. I've already just, just put this bolt in here like this. See that? See how low it sits? So I'm having to bring it up to uh, match the hole. And I know that my spot where it needs to be is at the top of the port right here. And you gotta be careful because in these heads, they don't really give you that much mating surface material. And that's why you saw me earlier, I was putting material on the top of that um, header because I don't want to just move the header on there and tighten it down because there's a good chance that after a while it might just work its way down like this and you're going to have a blowout, you're going to have the port being blocked at the top. So let me grab the header real quick. And if you look, I added a bead there so that way there's no chance that header coming down on this side. And I put one on the far side right here too. So if I put this in there, there's no chance of that side coming down. You really only need it in two sides because uh, you don't do, do every single one. Just so it rests on there, there's no way for it to finagle itself down. So let me go ahead and put this guy in here real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm doing now, I'm just test fitting it. And it looks pretty darn close. I think I might have to, let's see this real quick. Yeah, it looks like I might have to bring this side up while the holes out on this side a little bit more so I can push the header up just slightly more add material to the top of that hole so that way it fits slightly higher but all in all I think it's gonna work pretty good I got this gasket on backwards but it's not tight I was just doing a test fit so I gotta make sure when I put this on that I flip it this way because it only has one relief for those plugs right there for the plugs I think that's where your uh, the stock temperature sensor went so need to do that other than that, I think it's actually working out pretty well. She should like that. Well, oh, well, oh, well. I'm going to call that perfect at the top of that bad boy. See right there? Each one is 
nice and aligned with the top of the mating surface on the exhaust port. So I know I have good contact all around, all the way around the port and all these gaskets in there. I didn't put them all in like last time because I can see the bottom of the holes when I waddle them out a little more. I made them a little bigger than I need, so they'll work just fine right there. And also, uh, it's really tight in some of these areas, and I kind of boogered these up um, when I had them on the uh, small block Chevy. So what I'm going to do to fix that problem is I went to a 5 16th exhaust bolts, so the head's smaller. And what that's going to do is allow me to get a you know, open end wrench or a wrench in there pretty easy to uh, tighten these guys down. So that's going to make life a lot easier on that subject. So let's go on to another subject that I think I want to touch. Like I said before, this is one of the first motors I ever started modding. And I started modding this, I didn't really know too much about it. And I just got the biggest gasket back in the days and I port mashed it, which did pretty much nothing except make the ports look really big and cause problems like this. Because if I didn't go this crazy back in the day, I wouldn't have to do all this work right now. So let's go on down here to a stock LT1 head. And I'll show you where back in the day I messed up. Luckily, it didn't hurt flow on that head. But uh, you look right here. This is the exhaust hole that I cut. It's up there on this motor right here. And this is a stock hole. So you look right here. And you can see how much I raised it up. And that's why these are wallowed out. So I went as high as I could on it, which I guess it'll help some. But the problem is right here doesn't really give you much flow. The bottleneck is right here. And I did have these cut bigger. So that's why they flow better. So in reality is you really don't have to do all that work to the exhaust port if your bottleneck is not going to change right here because you're doing very little for the flow so that's my little <laughs> piece of advice if you're going to start porting stuff and you've never done it before learn from my mistakes back in the day oh look i just noticed this this is one of the heads at one point i decided let me go ahead and report this right but i said screw it because i didn't feel like doing it because it's so much work but as you can see right here this is more the correct way to do it i raised the runner up right around there and on this one, I raised the runners even higher. That's why everything is a pain in the butt to match up. See right here, look down there in the, the valve guide area. Turn right here. You can see it where I started to do it. And I said, screw it. But I was getting to it. But oh well. This is, was definitely a, a lesson back in the days that I learned and I was going to do it right. But... This head was already cut for bigger valves and all that, so I was like, screw it. It's not really worth it. And this head still flows better than the best stock LS head with a cathedral port. So this side is done. Time to duplicate that time consuming process on the other side. Let's get to it. You're wondering what's going on with this. This is a sharpening stone, so it's perfectly flat. And I prefer to use this on stuff you're trying to get true, or at least trying to get it somewhat true, instead of just putting a wheel on it and hitting it up. I think this is gonna work a lot better. So the passenger side is now done. It's perfectly flush with the top of the port. Looking good. As much time as I took doing that, man, I could have had this motor in and broken it in by now because this was kind of a chore. It doesn't look like you're doing much, but you take it off, put it back on, port, take it off, put it back on, weld, grind. Man, it's a long process. But I think it'll be worth it because I feel way better about that than the ports being blocked at the top. 
Well, that's about it for this update video. Uh, my next video, I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how I did this pointer. I know I had one video on it, but I'm gonna show you how I found top dead center if you wanna go to a carburetor setup on your LT1 and use a pointer like this, because this is a very inexpensive pointer. It's an inexpensive uh, small box heavy balancer. And after that, it's just uh, putting the guy in here. I gotta do a couple of things in here. I'm gonna, I had the, uh, look at this. Right down there, there's a hole right there. See, if you look like right there, I had to notch out the frame uh, for that three inch exhaust to fit and made up to the collector. So I'm gonna pull this guy right here off tomorrow and then I'm going to weld that hole up so it's nice and flush so I don't have anything that could possibly crack right there. But like I said, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for making it to the end. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and that bell, and peace.